Welcome to Munglish season four. My name is Ming Jin. I'm here with Ye Vang, our host, your normal host. So, but Ye, you texted me the other day. Come back to Munglish. <laughs> I think you are our most appeared guest. Number three. <laughs> I think you're number three. I think you are the most. But my but my role today is actually what I was telling uh, Matt is uh, I feel like is my sweet spot, which is asking questions. Yeah, I think that's your. I mean, I've known you for a long time. I think we're, that's what you're really good at. I think the other thing too was uh, I think the original plan was uh, we were going to do this. Uh, and it was just going to be me looking at a camera and I told Matt, I'm like, that's too weird. Yeah, no, no, I can't, I can't, I can't do the, like, I know that for some people when they do this, they could literally just talk for an hour and look into a camera and just kind of yeah. go. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I feel weird. Most times when I look at a camera and I talk, it's like 15 seconds. You know, a, a good question is a gift. It, it's a gift. It helps you. It draws you out. Yeah. If I were to say to you, bro, Say something interesting. Like, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. But so why, why don't we kick this kicks off this way here? Can I tell you a story? Go I, ahead. I, I, I've had some interviews uh, for TV when I think the, the, the person's like, well, tell us about yourself. And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, you got to start somewhere because the tell us about yourself is yeah. such a yeah. sh- stuff. I don't, I don't know where, where do you want to start? So, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but yeah. Here's a, I, I screenshot of this earlier, so I wouldn't have to dig it up. Oh. Thursday, February 29th. It was leap day. February 29th. 9.53 p.m. I texted you. Uh, I, don't, I don't, my memory doesn't go that far. Well, that, that's, that's why I have it written down, right? That's the beautiful yeah. thing here. I said, uh, hey, you want to go grab a bite? You said, hey, bro, my leg's been really busted up really bad. I've been in bed for the last two days and I can't really move. I said, oh no, can I do anything for you? No, I'm fine, bro. Thank you, I just need to get better. You want me to bring you food? And then you said, about a little over a week ago, there was a lot of pain in my upper leg and really puffy and I couldn't put any pressure on it or bend my leg at all. So I've just been laying in bed doing emails for the last two days. It's cool, dude. Uber Eats does most of my work for me. <laughs> it does. It was, it was horrible. It was one of those, dude, Taco Bell, McDonald, and Burger King was, <laughs> is literally like I can, at, at that time, it was literally like if I put an order in for Uber Eats, I could like, hobbled down the stairs. And by the time I got out of bed and hobbled down the stairs, the food would be in the front. Wow, fast. It was like, like yeah, you put in the order and literally in like 10 minutes, not even. Okay, so it could be fast or it could be that getting down the stairs. Oh, getting down the stairs took forever. Yeah, took yeah, yeah. a long like, time. Yeah, I had to hobble down. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of funny you had the dates because I, I don't remember when it all started. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was February 29th. Mm-hmm. And if you said a couple days, then that means 27th or so. Yeah. It would have been like a Tuesday. Yeah. I, but it was like a week before even you got to that point. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a week before, I think we were sitting here even. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you I, said, man, my leg hurts really bad. I got to stop going up and down those steps. Yes. Yes. I, what happened from there? Uh, I, well, the weekend before it started hurting, um, it literally felt like. And for people who are listening, this will all make sense later. <laughs> but, but it's just like right now we're just getting into my medical uh, life. Uh, so the week before, it felt like a Charlie horse, like somebody like hit you. Or I remember like, that. I remember like, you saying that. Yeah. Or like even like, um, you know, like I, I grew up playing like high school sports and stuff like that. And so it's just like your just leg just feels stiff and sore. So I was just like, whatever. I've had it many times and I'm just like, let's just walk it off, whatever. And then like. I'm like, I'll be gone in a few days. And then a few days it wasn't gone. And it was a week, but it was still like, I can still walk on it. Yep. Right. And, um, and I think there's a competitive nature inside of me where I've seen our other chefs who have had leg injuries where they just hobble around. And I'm like, oh, oh I can't. I mean, I can't go out if, you know, if I see these guys do this. So, so I, I just kind of hobbled around. But like, again, I think like for me, it was just always like, yeah, you, you never, especially in this industry and in, 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 in restaurant, like you never are a hundred percent go all the time. So it's always like, it's okay. 
you know? So, so then, then a week passed literally. And then that Monday I, uh, I tried to get out of bed and I fell down and I'm, don't worry. My bed wasn't that far from the yeah. ground, but I fell down and I'm like, Oh, why can't I not bend my mm, leg or mm. I couldn't walk? You know, I was trying to go to the bathroom. I'm like, Oh, oh. And then I kind of like just took my right leg because this was in my left leg and took my right leg and I kind of just hopped on it, Okay. you know? And, and I was like, well, that's weird. And then I just went back to, uh, I went back late in bed and I, I texted the, the, our chefs and I'm like, Hey man, I don't think I'm gonna make it in, but I'm gonna try to figure this out. And yeah. And, I, and that's, and, uh, and the next day you text me, go grab something to eat. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I can move right now. Yeah. Yeah. So then you were, trying to get better, hoping that it would go away. Yeah, I, well, this is the dumb part on my part is I I was in probably bed for like a week, a little bit over a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and not, and I wouldn't just say in bed, but it was like, what got really bad was suddenly I started having um, fevers and I was real, I started getting a little achy. And then I think that I just had no appetite. Like I just didn't like eat or anything and my and i would just be like asleep most of the day and but then i was like ah maybe it's just because i'm not eating or maybe i'm not having enough energy so i like i don't know it was hard actually to go downstairs just to get water so i would get water in all these gallon jugs oh, <laughs> and, gosh. and then you gotta bring, yeah, they gotta bring it upstairs, upstairs. <laughs> yeah but the whole time i i kept you know it was really dumb i kept thinking in my head i'm like my parents had it worse <laughs> that's the only thing that kept me going yeah. i was like whatever you know, like they cost them in Kong River. I could do this. And that's like the whole thing I was trying to think of. And but I, they did that so you wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, but I felt like that's the way that I connect, you know? Um, it's like method actors, right? Like they immerse themselves <laughs> in the actual pain so they know the, what their character feels like. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I kept going up. Um, and then it got really, really bad when, um, when, when I, I, like, you, it's crazy. I think I've told you this before. You don't know what, like, how much you you need to bend your leg for. Yeah. <laughs> like, putting on shorts and pants was like tough. Like, yeah. I laid, I would lay flat on the floor and like wiggle my like shorts on, and then like kind of like <laughs> wiggle myself in. Right. Yeah. Like I could. Thank you, God for knees. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like if our if we didn't have a knee, it would be very hard. I, I couldn't leave the house because I couldn't put my socks on Yeah, to put my shoes on, you know? Um, yeah. But at some point, the next time I talked with you, uh, you said, hey, I'm at my mom's house. Yes. Yeah, we, so we had a Zoom call that morning to talk about the fair. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So, or the, the day before. But yeah. anyhow, next time I talked to you, you, <laughs> so how did that happen? So, this is, again, very, very bad. But I'm, I, don't, I just don't like asking for help. I'm like, I can figure this out. There's no big problem, like whatever. Like I'm a big boy. Uh, I literally, my mom called and said, hey, come over and have fun. We're having this, you know, little get together. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I, I don't think I can. And she's like, are you busy? And I'm like, I mean, I, I didn't want to tell her yep. what I was feeling. And so I was like, well, it's not that I'm busy, mom. Like there's something wrong with my leg. And I described it to her and she got really, Frustrated because I'm like my father. My father's the same thing. My dad had a stroke and he didn't go to the doctor because he's like, oh, I'm just dehydrated. <laughs> you know, I'm just not feeling well. I have a headache, you know? And then he, I think he waited like almost two days before he went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, we took him to the ER mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, your father had a stroke. And, uh, and I, I'm my father's son. So I'm like, whatever, I'm fine. Um, and my mom was like, okay, you, you, you have to come over. Like, yeah. let, let, let your father and I take care of you. And I'm like, mom, I'm, I'm fine. Like, what are you going to do? Like, there's nothing. Like, this will go away. I just kept thinking to myself, this is going to go away. This is going to go away. I think inside I knew, I'm like, this is really, really bad. Yeah. Uh, so it took me almost 40 minutes to get out of my house. Like, put clothes on, <laughs> hobble down the stairs, and make my way to my car, which was really, really tough. Uh, which I got into my car my truck and then my truck was high. So I, I had to like crawl in and I remember I was just screaming cause like you have to bend your knee to get your yeah. leg just swing into your trucks so, or my truck. So I was just like, ah, and I was just like, let's do this. Um, and then because I was sick and I had feverish, like I couldn't, re like my vision was a little blurry. So I drove like, they, they live like half an hour away. So I drove to their house. It was like, 
9 30 10 at night almost oh man and i was just like okay just make it there and i this is really really bad but when i was on the freeway i used you know the the, the splitter lot you know the line that splits you on the freeway or those little white tabs like i looked at them as like okay do not cross like do not mm. let the car cross this like just stay in so between. even in your mind you, you, you just kind of felt like uh there was some cloudiness in your mind oh absolutely yeah. like at one point i was like wait what how did i get on this like i'll take an exit like Ooh. and i'll be like wait wait where how did i get here you know uh, yeah. and then i got to the house and i hobbled in uh they set up a little area downstairs in their house for me and i laid down there and i'm like okay and then mom went into total mom like mung medicine mode mm. so mm. there's all these like teas <laughs> she gave me <laughs> and there was all these like like <laughs> all these like teas and stuff that they made and, and they wrapped my leg in it and stuff like that. And they went to like, like, like they went to like old school in Laos, like yeah, the egg and the silver yeah, dollar. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Everything. They went to <laughs> super mode. Uh, and I, w at that point I was just popping ibuprofen for, and it was, it's really bad. I was like popping them just yeah. to like, so it just didn't hurt. Uh, going to the bathroom was tough cause just getting up and going. And then literally I was like, Oh man, I don't know. Maybe we might have to go in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next morning, my brother, uh, early in the morning took me in yep. uh, with, you know, my mom and yeah. And then it kind of went from there. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go on with the story, mm -hmm. let's take just a minute to uh, reflect on the first part of the story. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple times when you've said now, even this morning, that was really bad or, you know, that was really dumb. Yeah. What what are some of the takeaways that you have as you reflect on just the first week of that pain? Yeah, I think that for me, I, you know, one of the things that I I, I struggle with is just uh, uh, knowing that hey, this is out of my control, and I'm you know that I'm in that like this pain is real. You know, I think that for me, it's like no, I'll go away, and it. I think that this that's part of just. I don't know. Some people might think that's unhealthy. <laughs> I kind of just feel like it's kind of like my blessing and my curse sometimes, you know, mm. where I'm like, the pain will go away. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know? But the other thing too is like not addressing the pain, you yeah. know, when it happens. And, yeah. but for me too, also, it wasn't anything different than I've ever experienced. I was like, oh yeah, pff, I'm gone. Like, you know, this a couple of days, it, you know, you stretch it out, you'll be fine. Yeah. That's what I thought eventually, you yeah. know, yeah. at first. Yeah. Yeah. Can't walk it up if you can't walk. Yeah. So it's like, start walking, you know, walk it up. <laughs> horrible logic, I guess. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, it, it, it's just this address, me addressing some of the stuff I deal with, especially with pain or whatever. And just being like, I, I'm fine. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, like my, I, I guess, but, but like my thing that I think about is like, it's not that I'm not saying that the pain's not there. I mean, I recognize it's there, but it's like, well, we can go one more day. Yeah. We can do this one more day, yeah. you know? But there comes a time, as your story is saying, that we need help. So l let's explore this second idea real quick, which yeah. is it's hard to ask for help. Absolutely. Yep. So as you reflect on it, what is it about help, asking for help, the mm -hmm. act of asking for help that feels difficult? Um. So I learned this from Alex Roberts, who owns uh, Alma and Brasa. And, uh, you know, he's one of those dudes where I can just text and be like, hey, man, um, you got an hour. I just want to talk about some stuff going on, especially with the restaurant stuff. And 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 he gave me this really great idea. Um, and he says, because um, because when I ask for help, I feel like I'm giving up. Mm. I'm just like, I'm, I gave up. Like, you're a loser. You gave up. That's why you're asking for help. You cannot do it. Mm. And, um, and he goes, he goes, it's not, he goes, yeah, you can look at it as giving up. But I, he goes, I look at it as surrendering. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, I'm like, it's, it's not giving up. And he goes, no, no, no. Surrendering is not giving up. Surrendering is saying that you don't have control anymore and, and you're surrendering, you know? And as he broke that down and reminded me that the things that were going on with your leg, it's you're surrendering. You know, uh, and and in that there there are there there are a legion mm. of people behind you that's mm. ready to help. Mm. Mm. You know. So there's a connection. Let, let's see here. If Alex Roberts is defining mm -hmm. surrendering 
not as giving up or quitting, mm-hmm. but as recognizing that you are no longer in control. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the connection there would be surrendering is bringing your perception of your situation in line with the reality yeah. of yeah. your situation. Perception and reality can often yep. be separate. Yeah. And when we bring them back together yep. and we have alignment and mm-hmm. maybe freedom mm-hmm. from there. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it is the, yeah, you're right. It's the alignment of perception and reality. Um, I had an old, uh, I had a mentor in college who always said reality is your friend. Yeah. You know, the yeah. problem is we always make reality our enemy yeah. and we always push it away. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that it started making sense in my head or like it's like the, that reality and that, you know, perception started coming together. Where it's like, oh, dude, you got to go into the, you know, into the ED or the ER or whatever, you know, oh, dude, yeah. you, this is beyond your understanding. This mm-hmm. isn't going to be handled by popping four ibuprofen, you yeah, know, yeah. like that's that's not that's merely a band-aid yeah, yeah, to what's that's really right. going on that's in right. there. Yeah. And so now there's one more part of your story and then we'll move on with the story. Yep. But one more part that I want to explore a little bit, which is the connection between your parents and their story literally crossing the Mekong. For them, it wasn't an allegory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a metaphor. Like, yeah. It was a river. Yep. Right? It yeah. was the river they crossed. Yeah. And you often think about, you know, in our friendship, I hear you often, yeah. you know, if my parents crossed the Mekong, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can do this yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. right? So let's explore that connection a little bit more. Yeah. What, what, what does that experience mean to you uh, about yourself. Yeah. I mean, I think that three things I think about one, a sense of pride, like they did this, like they did this at such a young age. They did this because I mean, it, it is the personification of survival. Yep. Words mean stuff to me, you know, words mean stuff. So words like, um, trauma, like, I don't dare use that word trauma on some of the stuff yeah. that's gone through because, oh, they get to use that word trauma. You know, like that's, they can use that because that's what they went through. Suffering. I don't use that word suffering <laughs> the, because I understand, I have not been there, but I understand what suffering means, mm-hmm. you know? So like, there's a sense of honor and pride I got where it's like, man, they've been through all of this. So then when mom says to me, you know, um, you're going through some stuff right now, but this too shall pass. I take that as gold, you know, mm-hmm. then it's just somebody else who's just like, oh yeah, don't worry. You'll get over it. You know, you'll get through this. It's like, <laughs> okay, yeah. what, 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 what do you know getting through this? What, what does it mean to you? Cause like to my mother and my father and to those thousands and thousands of Hmong people who went through this, when they say we'll get through this, they have a reference point. Mm-hmm. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so for, for me, there's just, sense of joy it it sounds weird but there's joy and honor of like wow you guys went through this pride a sense of pride i have in that it's a part of your heritage absolutely absolutely and then i think that the next thing is then it's like living up to that you know what does it mean to live up to that um how what does it mean to say you know all of this and you still choose to be like oh well you know I'm in a little pain here. Oh my gosh, it's hurting. Oh, it's so traumatic. You know, like those, those, or, or I'm really suffering. Like those words mean different. So it's like living up to that. What, what, what does that mean? You know, how, how do you live up to that? Where it's like that comparison, like some people, a lot of, a lot of my white friends will say, you can't compare that. I don't know, man. I do. That's who I am. I, I do. And it's not this self-deprecating, like, oh, like, you know, like I have to live in agony. No, no, not at all. I want to be happy and I want to live with you know joy and all that stuff. But dude, it it it's tough sometimes when you have like what with, with friends who who I mean, you know, look, everybody has a different life experience, right? Who don't have that, and then they go, oh, well, you know, yeah, you, you, you don't owe them anything. Of course I know I don't owe them anything. They've never asked for anything. You know, but I still feel like I gotta live up to it. So if there are physical pains, there are, you know, mental struggles, it's like, 
I think about that. And I mean, sometimes, you know, in our friendship, I kind of turn it into a joke sometimes, you know, it becomes this like humorous thing. But for me, I do often think about it a lot yeah. when I'm in, I'm struggling or when I'm yeah. pain or there's a lot of stuff going on. And I think, uh, so, so, so for me, you know, I feel a sense of pride. I feel a sense of living up to that pride. And I think the third thing for me is, um, I think that there's a, there's a part of me that feels like, like, I know I don't, I, I think this is just me feeling it where it's like, I really, I have to earn it. It sounds weird, but I have to earn it. Mm. You know, uh, I have to earn. And I know they would never tell me that. I know that that was never, I'm doing this so you could, you know, like there was never, it's never that, mm. but I feel like I have to earn it. I feel mm. like you know, it, and that's just, you call that a flaw. You call that a thing I need to work through with, you know, counseling therapy, but I got to earn it, yep. you know? And so those are the three things. It's that good to me. identify that and yep. know, know that. Let me see if I can draw two summary statements and mm -hmm. then we'll move on yeah, yeah. to what happened next. The first is don't run from, don't despise suffering. Mm -hmm. Suffering for you and maybe for the Hmong people, mm -hmm is a part of your heritage. It's, it's, it's your, mm -hmm. uh, how, uh, your parents escaped mm -hmm. literal death mm -hmm. was through the suffering and all the parts that went mm -hmm. along with crossing the Mekong river mm -hmm. out of Laos into safety mm -hmm. to Thailand. Mm -hmm. It's a part of your heritage. Mm -hmm. Don't run from it. Uh, embrace the suffering when it comes mm -hmm. that, that might be one yep. but a second one is this uh we all need help yeah and it's not wrong to ask for help mm -hmm. and asking for help trying to channel some alex roberts here mm -hmm. here asking for help is simply uh a embrace of the reality that you do not have full control over your life mm-hmm yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, those are, it's it's funny, man. Like, I know those things. I would say those things to, to Timmy, you know, one of our chefs, you know, like I, I would say the same thing to Trevor, our director of operations. I would I would say the same thing to him. Ask for help, chef, ask for help, you know? Uh, what's the thing I say to just young cooks come there? Don't be a hero. Like, you, you know, in your station, don't be a hero. But I mean, I, I often, I think I say it to them so much because it's a re constant reminder to myself, Yeah, yeah. you know? It's hard. So the next day, uh, I got a text from you. Uh, bro, I'm headed to the ER. Or I'm at the ER. Oh, yeah. North Memorial. Uh, no, it was uh, uh, St. John's. St. John's. John's first. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see you there because yeah. you only stayed there for a couple hours. Yeah. Like and then they hours, said hours, they're yeah. transferring me now. Yep. To regions. Yeah. To regions in St. Paul. Yeah, yeah. So what happened Shoot, I there? I totally forgot. That I, um, yeah, I, I, we go in, um, and you know, this is like the funny story I tell, but like when, when I go, when we went in, I, you, you're kind of vulnerable, right? Cause so like, I'm just like, my legs hurting, my head's like, uh, like a headache. Are I you have still a, having fever. Still oh yeah. Yeah. I was like at 105. Yeah. 405 so, fever. I mean, that's it's very high. Yeah, man. it's uncomfortable. I mean, I'm yeah, sweating. I'm 15 just, more degrees, you got prime rib. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. delicious. <laughs> yeah. Delicious. And we'll talk more about deliciousness. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> and, and so I, I, I'm. That's the name of the book. By yeah, the way. deliciousness. 15 degrees, 15, degrees 15, from prime rib. <laughs> 15 degrees from prime rib. Good, medium, rare prime rib. Speaking of, we should go tonight. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm laying there. And I, they're, they're pulling me in on this like little, uh, in this little wheelchair thing. But the wheelchair thing is like, it doesn't have like a leg extender. Oh, so man. I can't, so like, oh, I'm trying gosh. to keep my leg up, but then you're like holding your leg. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I, I, you I know? remember. Yeah, and so I'm trying to keep my leg up and I'm like, this is not working, it's hurting. And there, you know, and then I literally, I hear there, I think, I think it was a CNA or somebody that goes, hey, I know him. <laughs> Oh no. And I'm like, oh no. And this is in the morning, right? It's like, you know, six, seven in the morning. And then there's somebody who goes, wait, where have we seen you before? And I'm like, I'm just like, just get I me. I was on the bed over there. Yeah. <laughs> Put like, me in that bed over I'm there. Like, I'm like, get me into the room. And so we got in this little <laughs> room and the nurse came in. Bless his heart. This nurse is so sweet. He comes in and he goes, oh my gosh, like everyone's talking about it. 
we've seen you on TV. And I'm like, this is not the time, bro. Not the time. And then he, and then, I mean, again, bless his heart. He, he's, he's, you know, they're like, oh, we gotta, you know, we gotta get some, uh, like, uh, some IV fluid in you and all that junk. So they started putting IVs in me. Now this nurse starts putting IV in me, but then he like, is kind of struggling to find my vein a little bit. And then he was just like, you know what? I, I, you know, we're, I'm just really excited to meet you. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, not the time, not the time. And then he goes, my wife is Filipino. I love lumpias. And I'm like, what? So, oh, we're not done yet. And I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, Lumi is awesome. And I'm, and he's like, like the needle's like going around in my hand and trying to find oh it in there. Gosh. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, I will talk to you about lumpia, sing sing, hollow hollow. I will talk to you about any Asian food. Just get the IV in. <laughs> So he gets the IV in and he's just like, you know, blah, blah, and he walks out. My brother's like laughing because like people kept poking their head. They're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> and walking away. And I'm like, and the whole time I'm thinking in my mind, HIPAA, HIPAA, you can't talk about this outside of work. <laughs> and, and then the doc, the, the ER nurse, or the, sorry, the ER doctor comes in and she's a sweetheart. And, and she just like, well, I, well we, I heard we have a celebrity here. And I'm like, stop. It's again, like you feel very vulnerable. And I, I mean, it was, it's kind of a, you know, funny situation. I think we, I've told this story, you and Peter, this story, and it's just a funny situation. Um, but yeah, they started, they did an ultrasound. I always joke, they did an ultrasound on my leg and found out it was a boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, but no How joke. Far over on the leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No joke. The, my leg on, so it's my lower quad on my left side, my left leg on the left side of the colon. There's like a huge lump on there now. Yeah. And, and it, 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 it's, it's like hardened. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, they put that little gel on. I'm like, Ooh, it is cold. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, Oh, I know how every pregnant woman feels. Or something. Oh, yeah. You're like, Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. And they'd start going in. Cut that part. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> just kidding. I don't. Okay. Uh, it, it, and they started going in and, and they looked at it and they're like, Oh dude, there's an abscess in there. Yeah. Yeah, and then they're like, "This is serious." And then the ortho, the ortho, uh, the head, uh, the ortho doctor that came in and he says, "Hey, look, I just want to be real with you. Like, this is somehow it started out as a hematoma, probably. Mm -hmm. the little, the, you tore something inside, and there's bleeding, and then that bleeding got infected. And so they kept asking me, Did, was there a cut? They're looking at my, I mean, now they're looking at my whole leg, and it's like, is there any cut? Is there any way that this bacteria can get to your bloodstream? And I was like." No, and even to the point where they're like, okay, like, are you a drug user? I'm like, no, absolutely not. And he's just, and they're like, okay, like, they're like, be honest. Like, we're not, we don't really, like, we're not judging. We don't care. Like, could it have been a dirty needle? And I'm like, no, dude, like, no, like, yeah. absolutely not. And yeah. and so they're just trying to figure out um, how it got there. And and I think the doctor was really sweet. And she was like, the, the ER doctor, she's like, well, let's just like not like who can like we're done we're yeah. done just trying to figure out like, it's there yeah let's let's get to action here and so then they they're like region has some you know some some resources that can help with this so uh she was really sweet and they called over to region and region said hey we're, we're packed over here <laughs> she's like i got an idea <laughs> so she's like, we're gonna transfer you as an er person you know so that they can't deny you <laughs> oh interesting yeah so she was like she was so sweet so she, there's some strategy oh involved. she was oh, i didn't she realize was amazing that. hospital she was politics yeah yeah she was amazing she's like oh we're gonna tra like, we're gonna we're go it's gonna be she's like yeah. it's easy we're, it's gonna be an er you know like it's an emergency so like they have to take them yeah. and he's like yeah so the, you know they, they got me over took an ambulance ride uh uh i always feel like when when i'm on the gurney and they're pull, pushing me i feel like i'm on a magic carpet ride i'm like Woo. <laughs> uh I, they didn't give me any drugs or anything any painkillers they didn't give me anything yeah i was like oh whoa magic carpet ride oh i can show you the yeah. way um, were you aladdin or were you jazz uh, both uh, I, I played both I, I sang both parts and then i and then we we went over and literally it then like the whole process started yeah. and it got you know i think my mom got really really scared when she was like oh they're they have to transfer you yeah yeah she's like oh and and so you know, I, yeah, I hopped in, uh, we, we went over and then, uh, and it was a long wait. I mean, they, they they, 
they drained so much blood out every single test possible. Yeah. Uh, I went through every single, I went through MRIs, x-rays, everything, you know, it was scans, all the scans. And then eventually uh, they drained it to test it. And they're like, oh yeah, this is, it's a, it's a really bad infection. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm like, okay. You know, so, so they admitted me, I'm in the yep. room and yeah. Uh, by the time I got there yeah. at Regions, you were already in your hospital room. Yep. You had been in the waiting, you had been waiting in the ER for like six hours or something No, like that. it was, I was in the ER for uh, 10. Oh, for 10 hours. Yeah. By the time I saw you, you had not been allowed to eat yes. for almost 24 hours. 24 hours, because they're like, there's a possibility of surgery and you can't yeah. eat or drink. That's and I'm right. Like, I'm like, could I just get some? Like, they're like, we'll give yeah. you some ice. I was so thirsty. They're like, yeah. just give you some ice cubes. And I was getting ice cubes and I was just like, mm, 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 ice yeah. cubes. Yeah. So Peter and I walked in. Yes. And uh, you were laid up. You were in your hospital yeah. gown. Right when we got there, mm -hmm. the nurse came in and said, no surgery. You can eat. Remember that? And Wait, uh, did they? Yep. Pretty oh. much right away. And then Peter ran and got Chipotle for you. Oh. You put your order in. Yeah, that was like the first thing I had got. Yeah, yeah. So like 24, 25 hours. And then the next morning, uh, the orthopedic surgeon came in. Yeah. And he was talking to you about the fact that you are going to have surgery in the next, you know, as soon as possible, basically. Yeah. And what wound up happening was that the uh, surgeon said, well, there is a possibility mm -hmm. that we don't need to open you up. Yep. That we can monitor the bacterial infection mm -hmm. because they were giving you intravenous um, antibiotics. Yep. And it the course had just barely begun. In fact, yep. it began when I was there on your yep. very yep. first yep. night yep. there. At one point, I had five different IVs stuck in me. So I felt oh, like, the, yeah. yeah, I mean, you saw all the IVs yeah, and that's everything. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I you, mean, you were Neo in the Matrix as absolutely. the battery. Yeah. I, absolutely. You had wires everywhere. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, and, and one of the things was like, I mean, the, the staff at Regions is incredible. They were just like, okay, we're just going to pump you with all these antibiotics. Yep. We're not sure where this is. And the biggest thing was we, we have to make sure that this, this didn't get into the bones, yeah. into your bone, yeah. you know, or into your bloodstream. Because then that's a whole different ball game yep. that we got to play. Yeah. Yep. So I remember actually when the surgeon uh, left and said, okay, we could, you know, hold yeah. off. Uh, but you had a huge look of relief on your oh my I mean, gosh. your entire countenance. Yeah, I was like, changed. oh, I'm like, let's from do a this. one to a ten. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, there's a part of me that goes, okay, body, let's go. Like you failed me a bunch of times. But I, this is the one time I need you to like get this done. You know, I'm like, look, I haven't been nice to you in the last ten years. Okay, sorry about all those Taco Bell runs, but I need you. Like I need you to come through for me. Like you know, I'm like, hey, hey, bro, let's do this. Like we can get out of here in two days and we can get back to work. I remember know? this. Yeah. yeah I was just like, let's go body. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. yeah. So Peter said left. 48 hours. Remember the guy said in 48 hours, we'll see. That's right. Yeah. So that's right. So Peter and I left that night. The next morning I got a text from you. Yeah. They rushed me to surgery yeah. at 5 AM. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, tell me about that experience. You guys left. I'm like living the dream. Right. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Like, I'm just going to, the body's going to do its thing, you know, the antibiotics are going to do its thing. Like, you know, you know, the, the wonders of technology and medical technology, it's, you know, and then, yeah, we're going to be fine. And literally that evening they're like, oh yeah, uh, they're going to, you're going to go on a surgery. And I'm like, wait, what? I just had Chipotle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I just ate Chipotle. It's working through my system. Trust me. This barbacoa <laughs> is going to do its thing. You know, <laughs> that's the whole thing I'm thinking of. And, and they're like, okay, no more food, no more water. Um, you're going to surgery. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. I, I literally just got my jello. I literally got my sugar-free, you know, strawberry jello and I'm going to pound this bad boy. And they're like, no, you're not doing this. And so, yeah, bro. They're like tomorrow morning, uh, you're, you're going to be the first one on deck. And I'm like, what? And yeah, man, that, what, th what went through your head when you heard you were going to go under? Well, it was late. So I knew everyone was sleeping. So I was like, I felt really alone, man. Like I, everyone was sleeping. Like my mom, and dad, you know, it was late. So it was just like, what? And so I kind of just lay there. I'm like, again, perception, reality, right? It, it hit me again where I'm like, well, 
I bet you they're going to be like, no, 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 we're not doing it. Just just playing. Mm -hmm. Then I can just eat again, you know. But it was like they were like, no, we're, we're, we're rocking this. And so I was just like, OK, you know what? It's going to be a little cut. Stuff's going to come out. We're going to be fine. Like, you know, like I'm back on my feet. We're back on the feet. We're going. We're going. Um, yeah, all that stuff. Where it's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm, I'm, it, it's going to be OK. Yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see if I can do a quick summary because mm -hmm. I, I know we've had conversations after you've gotten home and you're like, yeah. wait, that happened? Yeah. So you were, you were pretty woozy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they gave you some nice painkillers, yeah. but I, I think that for me, it was just like, you know, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll be fine. You yeah, know, but it can really fog up your mind. Yes. So you went in for surgery. Um, they cleaned the wound, but they did not remove well, tissue. Yeah. So to back up a little bit, I, I went into surgery. This is, so they talked me through the surgery. I think it's a little, like a little slit, two couple inches. They just drain it. And they're like, well, it's going to be like a 22 centimeter cut. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to convert that. And I'm like, look, I'm Americans. So I need inches, <laughs> yeah. bro. And then centimeter crap. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I kind of like figured that out. I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's not about a decent, it was a decent size. You know, that's how, that's yeah. what we're, and, but I, I didn't understand them because they're like, um, that's where we're going to start. That's what they meant. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean that's where you're going to start? I mean, how hard is it just to like, like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I, I've, I've popped things before. I just need a little slit, right? And that's what I'm thinking. Yep. Uh, I didn't realize how big this was. And then even going into the, like, I've never been to like pre-op like this before. Mm -hmm. So I'm laying there and you know, you're, you're like undressed basically. I have a little blanket over you and, and like the doctor comes in and he like, they literally like put the marker around. I mean, now it's pretty like this, lump is pretty big on my yep. like and so they drew the little marker he signed his little name on there and it was like really funny one of the pre-op nurse again bless her heart she was like uh she was like hey um have you had surgery here before and i'm like no <laughs> and she's like you look very familiar i'm like oh dang so i'm like laying there right and she's like putting all like you know the heart monitors on me and everything and i'm like yeah no, this is my first surgery like this. And she's like, gosh, I cannot place your face somewhere. And I'm like, be cool, man. Just be cool. And I'm like laying there and you're, and, and, you know, I've had a little, you know, some painkillers. So I'm just kind of like, eh. and doctor's talking to me and, you know, we we're kind of chit chatting and building a little rapport and the docs, uh, the surgeon's like the doctor, the surgeon is like, Hey, uh, just, just the one, just wondering like, what, what's, you know, what, what do you do for your job? And I said, Oh, we own a little restaurant. And the nurse who was like on a computer typing, she wasn't like really paying attention. She just yells out. Oh, that's where I know you from. You're, <laughs> I've seen you on TV. And I'm like, oh, and I kind of looked and the doctor looked at me. I looked at her and I'm like, just, you know, and, and later on she came back. I'm here for surgery, miss. Yeah, yeah I'm like, just, just, just cut me, cut me doc. And, and she, uh, she was, she was so funny. She came back, she goes, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that out loud, you know? And I'm like, yeah, it's okay, whatever. And, but yeah, but then went through the surgery. So they, they, they you know, they gave me a little slit. And when I say little slit, it was, it was, uh, um, it was like 20, 20 centimeters, you okay. know, and then, you know, you know, they, they drained everything out and they said they used about six liters of saline to just flush it out, wow. flush it out, flush it out. And then they didn't close me up. They, yeah. they kind of left it open a little bit, but then I had my juice box on there yeah. and then uh, they, they put a vacuum yep. bandage on. Yeah. There. So basically they saran wrapped it yep. <laughs> and, yep. and then they wrapped it up in, uh, and I didn't see it. So it like, it literally like I had this like thing across my whole leg. So when I yep. got out, um, yeah, they had an ACE bandage yep. from your, all the way from my yeah, hip, from your hip, all the all way, way down, down to my your ankle. foot. Yeah, yeah. My foot. Yeah. 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 And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm thinking we're done. Yeah. Um, and then the surgeon came back and said, Hey, we're probably gonna have to go back in. Yeah. I'm like, what, you know? Um, and I'm like, okay. So they said rest today. In 48 hours, <clears throat> we're going to go back in. And <clears throat> and they did. And I remember the first time they took the ace bandage off and I just saw a hole on the side of my leg. That started getting real. Mm -hmm. Like there's like this crevice. It's like a, it's like the Grand Canyon on the side of my leg. Mm -hmm. And it's but the, this is after the second surgery. No, though, it was after right? the first surgery. After the first surgery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, 
okay, like yep. let's, I guess this is happening. So what did they do during the second surgery? The second surgery, they cleaned it up more. It just to make sure that there wasn't no, uh, yeah, they, they went and cleaned it up some more and then just wrapped me back up. Yep. Yeah. And then the third surgery. So it's five days, three surgeries in five days. Uh, oh no, the, se the second surgery, they took all the meat out. Yeah. Sorry. The second surgery, they took all the meat out. So literally I've, I mean, they show me the pictures later and I sent it to you guys. <laughs> yeah. And literally it's like, if you ever broken down the side of a cow or, or deer, that's exactly what it looks like. Um, and we will, sh we'll put those pictures up on the show notes. If you no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's part of me is like on the show down there, click down there. You want to see all the link pictures? Link for gore. Yeah. Link, uh, link for if you're weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so funny cause I, you know, by the time I got those photos, right. Uh, you know, I was already out and all that stuff and my parents, you know, they had this big trip to Vietnam. So they were in Vietnam. So I, I, um, I sent it to the family text. So this is, I was out already and everything. I got it, you know, probably like a week or two after surgery, I got these photos and I sent it to my, 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 our, our family text. And my little brother, uh, knew that my parents were in Vietnam. So they thought that they were sending. So he was like, he told me later, he's like, why is mom sending us pictures of them breaking down a cow or, or a water <laughs> buffalo? <laughs> so my brother, my little brother said, and he goes, then I look closer and I'm like, wait, those are medical reports. Oh my goodness. Cause he didn't read my first text that said, Hey, oh this is my. the surgery on my leg. And this is the meats, that, the meat that they took out. Right. Or, or the muscle, I shouldn't say the meat, the tissue or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. The meat, they took the out the necrotic tissue, yeah, the yeah. necrotic tissue they took out. And <laughs> Devitalized tissues. Yeah, my my little said. brother realized that this wasn't a cow Delicious, were, yeah. yeah this wasn't a cow they were breaking down <laughs> but this is my leg and he like laughed so hard and then he went and showed his wife he's yeah. like christina look yeah uh, then his his little his little nephew was like kind of weird and he's like daddy i want to see <laughs> um yeah so i remember one of the nurses or the surgeon said that of that particular muscle on your mm -hmm. quad they mm -hmm. had to remove a third yeah. of the actual tissue yeah about yeah. a third of it yeah. yeah and like if you look at my leg now it dips in yeah. Like, you know how like your quad, it like, you know, kind of bulges a little bit, you know, instead of, instead of being rounded yeah, out. Yeah. It dips in a it little actually bit. Dips yeah, in, yeah. yeah. And then eventually I didn't even count. You're the one who counted you weirdo, but what? 38, 40 stitches or something. Yeah. I think it. I counted on your photograph. I didn't, I wouldn't, it didn't count it on your leg. Yes, yes. Mind you. <laughs> yeah. We uh, have 30, boundaries. Yeah, 30, <laughs> yeah, not many, you're but like, that's one. Yeah. yeah. So 30, one stitch. 37 stitches, yeah, yeah, 37, almost yeah. down to your knee, almost, to almost up to yeah, your Yeah, so hip. everyone keeps thinking that my knee got cut on. I'm like, no, no, not my knee. Yeah, my yeah. knee's fine. I can yeah. bend my knee fine, whatever. Yeah. But it is the whole side of the leg. Yeah. And yeah. So give me a snapshot of your legs, condition, and your overall health today. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the recovery. So here's my thing is, again, re reality perception, right? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine, right? So literally, I got out. I was like in there for nine days. I got out, went back, and like I, I stayed with my brothers at my brother's place for like two, three days. My parents were gone, and my you know my brother. They were actually thinking about canceling the trip. My brother, my older brother, was like, "No, no, no, we'll take care of him. We'll be yeah. fine." And it was so adorable because my my little nieces and nephew, like I was laid up in bed, so they would like knock on the door and like, they bring in like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they'd be like, "Hey, Uncle Yim, yeah, Uber Eats is yeah, here." Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm like, "Where's my Taco Bell?" <laughs> no, uh, they would bring me in food, and I literally three days max. I was like, "I'm done. Like, yeah. I'm so done." And I had a pick line inside of me for the antibiotics, so it's, it's just forty. 42 centimeter line that goes yeah. from your arm all the way to your heart. And then yep. I had to put this, um, and, and it goes all the way into yeah. the actual, my second uh, ultrasound, into I your got. heart. Yeah. They yeah. had to ultrasound it to get it in. And then, and then, you know, you have to inject, uh, yourself with this, um, with this antibiotics, but there's a whole process of making sure it's clean so it doesn't get infected. And, and I was just, and then, and then they gave me like all this med, which like you needed like a degree from MIT to figure out what to have, what, at what time, you know, at, and literally I would have to wake myself up in the middle of the night oh just my. so that I would hit that six hour mark every yeah. six hours, take this every six hours. And then I had, and then I had to inject myself with blood thinners just so that, you know, the blood would flow, you know, good, you know, so that there weren't, there weren't any blood clots in my leg. And I mean, like you had to just remember all this. I had all this timer and mm. again, this is somebody who lives their life freely. Like I can go here, I can hop in my car and go wherever I want. I want Starbucks, go, we're rocking, you know? Yeah. Now I'm, now I'm like, 
I'm out of the hospital, but then I'm like stuck in this bed and I'm stuck with this big pile of meds that it's timed out. Yeah. And I, I, that's when I really was like, this is dumb. Yeah. This is dumb. But then I also knew the gravity of the healing part, but yeah. then I didn't feel like I needed it. So late, <laughs> so I got out and I knew that that Saturday, cause I got out on a, like a, I don't know, like a Tuesday or something like that. I knew that that Saturday I had a, uh, a very important uh, podcast that we had to do with this big national um, podcast group. And I mean, this is like kind of like an, cause I was a fan of this person, kind of real honor to be in. Um, I was in no condition, I don't think, to hop in my car and drive into here. Yep. Cause the podcast we did in the back. About a half hour drive. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. So that's when I was like, hey, I'm coming back to my house. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah. But hey, let's go back a little bit. So when I was in the hospital, yeah, I understand. Like my, my apartment is pretty, or my, you know, my house or my little duplex I live in, it was pretty like, it was, I moved in there October, but like I haven't set up anything. <laughs> so, so I mean, I would tell you, I have literally uh, lawn chairs in there yeah, yeah. and you didn't believe me. <laughs> no, I thought you were joking. <laughs> so literally it was one of those Ikea uh, coffee table and lawn chairs and boxes and junk yeah. everywhere. The camping and, chairs, you open yeah, them yeah, up, the camping they, chair. they, it was, but it they was, come in the sleeve. Yeah, but it was like the nice lawn chairs, okay, you know, with the little right, cup well. holders at least. And, 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 and uh, I had like a little desk. There was no light in there really. Uh, I, I, cause I'm just on the road or I'm here. And so I'm, I literally have a bed set up. That's all it is. And, 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 and just boxes of junk of like kitchen equipment. Uh, we were sent a bunch of like sample stuff. So that's all like, it's a storage unit. Spices. It's, yeah. Spices. Yeah. just yeah. all these things that were boots. Bo yeah. Boots. Beaver hat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> antler. Yeah. Antler. My, my Zulu <laughs> warrior spear. Um, uh, so many ways to stoke fire. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was a lot of things that we can start fires. So, yep. Yep. We had like all these different things that we were trying out and it was just becomes this, it's, it was like a, uh, a, a literally, uh, um, and I don't think people believe me when no, I no. said this and you yeah. saw it was it was literally a storage unit for more stuff for UHK and V9. Yeah, that just yeah kept that's there. exactly what it yeah, is. Yeah, um, knives just hanging out. There was a shotgun. There was like shells. Shotgun in the corner of yep, the living room. It literally yeah. was. Uh, so, um, and, and I think that, I mean, to your testament, you're like, hey, when you get back and you heal up, you need to place the rest. And I'm like, yeah, cool, man. I got my bed. You're like, no. And I didn't realize you did this. And I guess I was a little, still kind of a little like drugged up too, a little bit from all the painkillers that you were like, Hey, I got an idea. Um, and two of my good college friends, they drove from four or five hours to come up, you know, sat by my side for a few days. Um, that's just what those guys do. You know, Sam and Jordan, they were just there. Um, it was, it was amazing. Uh, a lot of restaurant friends I have showed up. Yep. You left know, messages for left you when messages. you were sleeping. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't one of those things that I wanted to broadcast to a lot of people, but there were people that were very close to me that I was like, because we had to cancel all these um, collabs that we had with V9 that we were doing. We had to cancel yeah. them all. Yeah. Um, uh, we had to cancel, I had to cancel a few appearances like TV stuff and, um, I just didn't, I, I just felt like I failed, right? I feel like I gave up, like, like your body gave up, you gave up. And I, uh, you gather a group of people, my family and friends, they all pitched in and you guys redid my house. Yeah. <laughs> so I come in and I'm just like, what? You know, there's like, a <laughs> where's nice, my shotgun? Yeah. I'm like, where's the, sh that's the first thing I'm like, where's the shotgun? That's a, and everything, man. Like it was, it's a, it was a 180 in that house. Like all these furniture, uh, uh, a little carpet because I have hardwood floors, a big 75 inch screen TV, like a dinner table where I can sit down to eat instead of just like eating on the floor or, you know, in my lawn chair. The first thing I did ask was, where did the lawn chair go? Like those, <laughs> I, those are very important to me. <laughs> <laughs> those were comfortable yeah. lawn chairs. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you and uh, Peter Janelle redid my kitchen. You did all my dishes. <laughs> Which like when I left, I didn't realize I was going to be gone for like two or three weeks. Yeah, you had no idea. You, yeah, you, you guys cleaned out the fridge, threw out all the moldy food. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I told you like, I my brain had a systems error. Mm. Um, I don't, 
I'm like, I have this thing. And, and, and I remember I told Jordan and Sam this, who, who came and just sat by my bedside. Um, I had this thing in my mind where I'm like, I'm the one who helps people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the one who takes care of people. Like, like I feel like that's like a role of mine where I, like, I really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. I'm the one where like, if you get in trouble or you don't know how to get out of this, like, I'm gonna help you figure it out. I've never really been seriously on the other end of it. And, and I think that m my brain was just like, you failed, you really failed. Like, you know, look at you, you're kinda, you know, and this narrative, you know, this narrative in my head, this uh, perception. Like, you know, like if, how could you help others when you can't even help yourself kind of deal? It started kind of creeping in. And, and I think that coming back to my place that Saturday and you're like, no, not yet. Don't look at everything. There's like boxes everywhere. You're like, we're still unpacking a couple of things. I remember you, uh, you and the Janelles are there and cleaning it up. And I'm like, I didn't know I had floors like this, you know? <laughs> um, and I remember I went right upstairs and I just like lay down and I was like, and my, I think, it, it was just, everything was just kind of catching up to me and especially all the stuff that was happening in the hospital, you know, just kind of all caught up to me. And then I'm like, okay, I got to make my way to do this podcast, you know, um, you know, for the sportful, that's the name of the podcast. And I'm like, I gotta go. And I didn't, you know, get, got here. And it, I mean, like, I, I just like trucked through it. I think, you know, half the time I was kind of woozy, dizzy, uh, lightheaded, you know, my, um, my, uh, uh, my blood level was really, really low, mm -hmm. you know, my, uh, and we're not talking blood sugar. We're talking no, no, blood, blood. Yeah. Just presence because, of, yeah, actual I had blood. a blood transfusion after the, yeah. And they said, Oh, a surgery like this drains a lot, takes out a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. So I had a blood transfusion in the middle, you know, between uh, one of the surgeries just so that I can have enough blood to go back for the third surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, but I was just like, whatever, dude, two days, man, you, you don't be a wimp, you know, yeah. nuts. And, and, and then, to my detriment sometimes. That's just the way I think yeah. about stuff. Um, so I remember a few years ago, you and I were both reading Erica Lee's uh, The yeah. Making of Asian America. Yeah. And in the final chapter, mm -hmm. she talks about the story of the Hmong people. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to uh, er Erica Lee. Yeah. Read the book if yeah. you've not read it, Making of Asian America, amazing book. Yeah. And if you have younger kids, have them read the making of Asian America a history for young people. That's right. And yeah. Chef Yi Vang is mentioned in that book. Really, I mean, it, I can't it, imagine it. a higher honor <laughs> than I, to have Erica well, Lee I put think, you in well, her book. Even I think that the thing is she's she's a professor at Harvard. You know, I mean she's I mean when I say a professor, I I'm just that's just doesn't even get into like her title is like like three pages long of what she is. And she's incredible, right? She's incredible historian, incredible writer. I, we could, I could say she's a friend of Union Monk Kitchen, a friend of V9, a yeah. friend of us, you know. But the one of the craziest things is like, um, like I, and she's at Harvard, you know, and she was here at U of M, but then she went, you know, she got, you know, this new job at Harvard. The, the best thing was she sent me the book and the letterhead on the envelope said Harvard University, <laughs> uh, you know, and I thought to myself, this is my buddy. I have a buddy who, who has a doctor from Harvard and I sent the picture to him and I said, this is the closest I will ever be accepted to Harvard. This is the closest and I'm going to take, and I literally, and then she has a, you know, her little stationery where she wrote a little note, wrote a beautiful note. It says Harvard on top. I think I'm going to frame that just <laughs> There you like go. her note is beautiful, yes. <laughs> but the fact that it says Harvard on there. If I got a note like that, yeah. I would frame it yeah. too. And, and there's sure. a part of me that goes, uh, you could go buy any stationery that says Harvard on it. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, but like a professor from Harvard actually uh, wrote absolutely. on this. Absolutely. You know, so I'm like, yes, Harvard. Yeah. So in The Making of Asian America, Erica Lee talks about Hmong people crossing the Mekong. Yeah. Right. And there's, I mean, there are some horrors that really are just unthinkable. Yeah. Right. Uh, mothers literally losing a baby mm -hmm. off their back. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we talk about going through these rivers in our lives, like you went through with your surgery, yeah. um, Erica Lee talks about individuals crossing over. We, mm -hmm. They talk about groups and mm -hmm. couples and families mm -hmm. crossing mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. But no matter if you went through it by yourself mm -hmm. or if you crossed with others, mm -hmm. there was a destination on the other end. Mm -hmm. And that destination was Bon Vinai. Yeah. Because being alone mm -hmm. uh, is not forever for, for that experience, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you had to cross the Mekong mm -hmm. 
alone, you went and the first thing you sought was not just solitude, mm -hmm. but, but companionship, Yeah. right? To begin to rebuild mm -hmm. whatever sense of mm -hmm. togetherness there was. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for me, I, I see a huge parallel here, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, as your friends, as your community, only you can go through the surgery that mm -hmm. you need to go through. Only you feel the depth of the pain mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. the pain of the surgery and mm -hmm. sitting there for all those days. I mean, mm -hmm. you were in the hospital for over a week, I think mm -hmm. eight days or something yeah, like eight, that. Yeah. Sitting by yourself, you know, we came to see you, but those were not our IVs. Those mm -hmm. were yours and those mm -hmm. were not our stitches. Those were yours. Mm -hmm. But the community says, man, we want to support you. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you to have a place of rest, a place of healing, mm -hmm. which is why your family, your friends are eager to, yeah. to help to help do that for you. Yeah, I think there's a huge parallel between that um, and your new restaurant, V9. Yeah, I mean, I definitely I, I think that sitting it's it's not the surgery that gets me. Uh, it's not even the pain or it's not even the, you know, oh, they took out a big chunk of your leg or whatever. Um, it wasn't the, you know, working with the PT to learn how to walk kind of or whatever or all the meds, not any of that. It was after eight when visiting time was over yep. and I was alone yep. until, you know, the next morning when mom, dad came by again. And in being alone those beds aren't comfortable. Mm -mm. There's no comfortable position to lay with, especially with the They're surgery. Made of in the plastic, mouth. not yeah. breathable. Yeah. Um, every time you have to go to the bathroom, you have to call a nurse or a CNA to come in to help you. And so I felt like I couldn't even do the most basic thing that I learned how to do when I was a little baby. Yeah. I couldn't even do that without asking someone for help. So you feel worthless. Um, I, and then my thoughts, man, like your thoughts get you like, like, Hey man, just be done, bro. Mm. Like, dude, you're done. Here's the deal. You know, my, our job in the kitchen is standing up most of the time. I couldn't stand up. You know, uh, the fact that the, 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 the orthopedic surgeon said that muscle is not growing back. Mm -hmm. Other muscles will grow around it, but you're gonna have to learn how to kind of rewalk. Mm -hmm. It, it took me, I mean, I'm very, very, very blessed to be able to go into the ortho post a week and a half after post surgery. And they're like, dude, the healing is so much better than we thought. You're walking a lot better than we thought, you know, to, to be like, you you are bounds before. And they were talking about, hey, it's probably going to be like six months mm. until you can probably walk. OK, mm. you know, or, or you can start feeling normal again. I'm like, really? You know, again, it was one of those body. Let's go. <laughs> yep. um, I thought about all the shows, you know, the most of the shows we do is very active. Yep. You know, um, so it's like, OK. So getting a hold of the producers and being like, can I be really real with you guys? But please don't ditch me, <laughs> you know, and That's they were scary. They were very supportive and they're like, we care about you. What can we do? How can we help? Don't worry. You know, mm. that was the biggest thing. Mm. Um, V9, the project was going on. So I was doing most stuff from uh, my cell phone or, you know, like basically just my, you know, um, with all with all the just the pain and stuff like that. Like it wasn't like I could watch TV or I could like be on my computer and do stuff like my brain was a little fuzzy sometimes because it just the pain would hurt sometimes, you know, the uncomfortableness. And then I just couldn't fall asleep. Yep. And so. Yeah, those nights were real tough and giving up. I, 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 I think that one time, like to my detriment, I'll be honest, I gave up. You know, I'm like, I'm done. Like, if this thing takes me, it takes me. I mean, I was so stupid. I had this whole thing where I'm like, you know what? I'm almost 40. I've lived a life that I would never would have imagined that I lived. <laughs> and my, in my heart, I was like, to, to, to just kind of like shamefully thinking to myself, like, yeah, I'm good. You know, because it's just like, what am I? I'm not use, I'm useless. Now, I felt so useless because it was just like, here's worst case scenario. Here's worst case scenario. Yeah. And then when I saw that picture, when I was laying there and I saw the picture of all that tissue, all that meat 
taken out. I'm like, how could somebody ever come back to being normal with all that com mm -hmm. coming out of you? Mm -hmm. You know? And so like, I got angry and I'm like, I, I can't go, like, this is not, you know? I was already feeling that I was like 80%. <laughs> I'm like, this is gonna take me down even more, you know, like just physically and yeah. So yeah, and, and I gave up. I was just like, I'm done. I'm done with all this. I'm, this is so dumb. Like I, I just felt like this pouting. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't imagine what those, what all those people of like my parents, my aunts and uncle that escape, like was there a point when they said, oh, we're done. Like we're gonna stop running. Like embrace death. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, cause if they catch up to us, they're gonna kill us. Mm -hmm. All the communist soldiers, like, that's just whatever, mm -hmm. we're done. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if some of them thought that or some of them goes, let's keep trucking forward. Let's keep going, let's keep going. You know, I, I don't know, but you know, so one of the things I think about the whole time I don't think I've really talked to anybody about this, is this. People go, hey, yeah, people are going to write comments about the food you guys do at UHK, at VNI. It's not personal. It's not personal. I'm like, screw you guys. It is personal. Hmm. Do you want to know how personal it is? So I'm here laying in this hospital bed, my legs all cut out. I didn't think that, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the future holds anymore. I don't even know if I'm worth anything, um, physically, you know, and then my brain was, I mean, my mind started going and I, I often talk about, um, uh, the, that Hmong dish of, um, uh, mustard green with braised pork in a soup dish and you eat it with rice. That dish has a, totally different meaning to me because every day every night every day that i was there my mom and dad would come in and that's what she brought mm -hmm. every day and it's just a stupid plastic bowl <laughs> she fill it up she had her little bowl of rice and after i got done eating she cleaned me and she almost i mean even to like a mother for a little baby like she even wiped you know wiped my and just kind of, even if I had stuff in my beard, she would do it. And that, and that like, like that, like it wasn't, it wasn't like the pork or the mustard green that gave me hope, it was her. Yep. And she's like, I'm not giving up on you. Like, like this too shall pass. Like I've seen worse. Mm. And like that, gave me hope you know like maybe i can do this maybe this will pass and so when people go hey don't take it personally yeah when they say this no screw you i do take it personally because this stuff's personal yeah. like this food is personal yeah. like you know when people go oh cooking saved my life no 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 literally this food s saved me yeah my mom would just sit there at that stupid couch in silence, you know, and my dad would too. And when my friends came and visit, they're like, well, we don't want to be in the way. So they would go out to the waiting room outside and then they just don't come back. And it, and every day, even after I was done, that was what she had. She would always just bring that in. And it was just this saving grace. And she loved me so much that she didn't want, she, they would take off all the meat from the bone to make sure that I wouldn't have to fuss with the bones too. Like I, I again, like if I was a, her little baby, her little child mm -hmm. and I'm not giving up on you, you know, we're not, we're not giving up. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we're, we're here, we're here, we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even when they got back and I was, you know, doing well, they got back from uh, Vietnam and my mom first thing off the plane, she calls me and she just apologizes almost in tears. She says, I'm so sorry. I felt like I left you. Mm. I'm like, mom, you're fine. Like, you know what? I have friends and I have family that took care of me. I'm, I'm completely fine. And she's just like in this anguish in her voice, like I left my child mm. in the most time of need. And I, and it was almost this thing where I think she felt a little guilty. And I'm like, I just had to reassure her. Mm -hmm. There is this legion of 
community here that took care of me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I can't talk to you about, I, I mean, I can't tell you how much about all the different chef friends who just text and say, hey, keeping up on you, how you doing? Keeping up on you, how, how you doing, you know? Um, and that's such the, and, and when I was laying there, man, I got to think about Vinay a lot in those, those nights, you know, like, People always ask, well, what's V9 going to be, right? Or, or, you know, we've all talked about this. What's the concept of V9? Yeah. Hey, what's the concept yeah. of V9? Yeah. And I, I was just like, I don't know. It's a restaurant. <laughs> what, what do you do in a restaurant? We make food and you eat it, right? <laughs> it was like, I, we're not trying to like be like, oh, you make food. And then suddenly, like we release out an animal and you have to pull out your sword and fight <laughs> the animal. Like, the, the, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't. I don't know. We, we don't have any great ideas of like reinventing a restaurant. Yeah. And I was always so bogged down by that where I'm like, do we, do we need a shtick to make people go, oh my gosh, that concept mm. was awesome. Mm. Mm. You know, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's a restaurant, you know, and, and that's where I started digging in in my, my laying there, dude, midnight, like midnight, two, three o'clock. And, you know, you're just awake and you're like, okay, so, you know, what, what do you want this to want to be? And it was through mom and dad showing up every day with that bowl of you know uh with that bowl that bowl of, of, of pork and mustard green and that rice and that's in that broth that i constantly i am it's ingrained in my memory and i know i know that taste mm -hmm. i know that smell mm -hmm. you know and that's when it just started sinking in mm -hmm. you know like what what do we want what what do i want what do we, I, whatever, want V9 to be? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we are on this cusp right now of V9 where it was after Dangerous Man moved out, it was literally, I saw it was just hollow. Mm -hmm. And you've been over there with me and the excitement of first just seeing like the floors ch change a little bit. And mm -hmm. then, you know, this little area built out and then this little area. And then it's like, oh, they put up the steel studs and you're like, whoa. And then they start forming these little rooms. And for, for years and years and years, I've only have had uh, a blueprint, you know, or, or, or rendering. Yep. But now I'm actually touching the wall yep. that's on the rendering, that's on, you know, the architectural drawing. And yeah, that's kind of like, okay, now I know what I want it to be. Or I have a, there's this vision of how we want to develop it. And now it's just communicating the vision to people and communicating the vision to our staff, you know, yep. um, and that, you know, as we are, as the build out is going on, I tell people you can poke your head in by, you know, just looking through the windows, you'll see all the, you know, a little work on it. And I was just there yesterday watching some of the concrete floor being taken out, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, uh, finishing up a bunch of the drywalls on the wall. I could start like the bar area, the kitchen area kind of being developed out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like very exciting. We wrote a piece together just a couple weeks ago about uh, what is the concept of Vinai? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that you landed on was restoration. Yeah. Talk to me about that. How does Vinai live out restoration? How does it bring Absolutely. about restoration? So uh, a few years ago, before Vinai even became an idea, I, I would always say that Vinai, I wanted this to be a love letter to my mom and dad. And so I wrote a love letter. <laughs> actually, I wrote a letter to them. I never showed, and I only show a few people actually, I would say. And in that letter, um, I just kind of reread it and I kept trying to find, pick out themes. Like what were the themes that are coming out of this letter that resonates? And the number one theme is restoration, which I didn't plan on any of that. Mm. It was mom and dad, you, you are our home. Mm -hmm. You are a restoration. You are a place of rest. Mm -hmm. When I needed to be rejuvenate, rejuvenated, it was either their story or their physical presence or their home. Or one bowl of restoration at yeah. a time. Yeah. And it was when I felt like I, and you can go into depths about all the stuff I feel like I screwed up on and all the stuff where I'm like, I don't think they'll take me back. And I'm like, I've, I've failed so hard that they're not going to take me back. And you know, mom and dad is always like, nah, we got you. We, we'll we get, get you through this, yeah. to this. Like we're a family, we'll get through this together, Yeah. you know? And yeah. so that was, reson it resonated. And this is years, this is four years ago before we even had that conversation of yeah. what we want, you know, yeah. what, what V and I to be. 
Yeah. Just as your mom every day brought restoration. I remember in always in a plastic bag yep, in a plastic it. bowl yeah. and she would bring her own spoons. Yep. <laughs> uh, every day your mom would bring restoration to you one mm-hmm. day at a time, one yeah. bowl at a time. Yeah. Uh, you want Vinay to play that role in people's lives as well. Yeah. I think, I think that you helped me form this really great piece. I mean, you could probably say it better than me. The part about um, like a, a universal condition sure. of the human. Yeah. Yeah. That the, the true universal condition uh, is, is brokenness. Mm-hmm. That, that's the one thing everybody in this world understands mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is pain. Mm-hmm. Everybody understands what it is mm-hmm. to experience loss, loss and hurt and mm-hmm. pain from the time we're babies. Right. Yeah. The first moment we come out screaming, not yeah. laughing. Yeah. We come out screaming because yeah. probably because we know it's going to be a lot of this yeah, pain this going be a on. Long journey. A lot of discomfort yeah. coming. Uh, and likewise, we all know, uh, we all have a desire because we all experience pain. We all want comfort. We yeah. all want to have what's lost yeah. or taken or broken to be healed or fixed or returned. Mm-hmm ultimately restored. And the, the one place that we talked about was the very word restaurant yeah. is from the French word restore, restaurer, yeah, right? Yeah, restaurer, yep. Um, so the, Vinay is bringing this kind of restoration that you have experienced not mm-hmm. only in your whole life from your parents, but most recently through this episode mm-hmm. of surgery mm-hmm. of a long hospital stay that you, just as you have received this restoration, you want to bring it to yeah. the world. Yeah. And I, I, I want to bring it under the banner of, um, and I say this a lot, but under the banner of mom and dad, like this is for me, this is, this is their legacy, yeah. right? Yeah. You get to, you get to proclaim the legacy. Yeah. I think a lot of times people think of legacy, they think of after somebody has passed away and they look at their legacy, but I'm like, well, why not talk about their legacy while they're still living? Mm, it's good. I, 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 I think that the, the biggest folly in our, our, our world is we wait till someone passed before we figure out what their legacy is yeah. and we piece all these things together. But for me in the last, I would say probably five, six years, you know, with UHK, with, all the things we've been able to do and building out Vinay, it's yeah, like I want them to see their legacy before they do pass or before they go, you know? Yeah. And how honorable, like for me, that's a, it's a sense of honor, honoring them by saying, this is your legacy. Yeah. You know, this is what you have set before for your children, your grandchildren, and even for them now, like their great grandchildren, you know? Yeah. You know? And so in our culture, that's one of the, that's one of the highest things is to be able to see, uh, you know, this pass through the word is Senzu, your, your ancestor, your, your, your um, like your descendants, mm. you know, and dad always uses that word you know, when he mm. talks about his grandkids and mm. his great grandkid, you know, mm. Mm. and just that idea that yeah. like, Hey, you know, this is, we want to bestow this upon you. And, and I hope, I hope Vinay gets to be a place like that for that corner in Northeast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the fact of the history of Northeast that the Northeast was one of the first neighborhoods in, uh, in Minneapolis where it was all the refugees and immigrants landing there from mm-hmm. Eastern Europe after World War I, after World War II. And they were kind of thrown there, kind of saying, oh, I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And now it's still like walk, looking across the street, we see Oro and Nixa, mm-hmm. you know, and then right sharing an alleyway is young Joni. Mm. You know, and not, and you know, less than a mile down is, you know, um, uh, high high, and three blocks away is Diane's place. Mm-hmm. You know, I I feel like Northeast is going back, not going back, but Northeast is it is what it always was. Yeah, and it continues to be yeah. a place of refuge, yep. of richness, diversity. Mm-hmm. Yep, and 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 we're hoping that Vinay can be the new, like even though Vinay is the new kid on the block there, like that we can. Uh, be able to be part of that restoration, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. And, and I mean, there's just, a, there's just a lot of logistics, 
you know, um, it's not like you do this and then you forget about what's going on here, you know, so it's still, you know, logistics of all that, but we're, we're really excited. You know, I, I walked that line between anxiousness and excitement. <laughs> so I don't know if it's like excited than anxious or anxious than excited, but it's, sure. it's one of those. Yeah. Sure. So I know you, you're probably asked a lot questions like, oh, what are you most excited for? But mm-hmm. I want to I want to twist that. Yeah. I want to twist that question. What are what experience, what impact do you hope people that come to V9 Mm-hmm. walk away with what impact do you want to have on those that come to vni Co- well a couple things i would say one for Hmong people who come to vni for the Hmong diners it's a little different right because we got the history you know we got the heritage behind it so it's i would love for them to see to to to, to see that hey we can take our past no matter how troublesome no matter how hard it was, we can take our past and what our past does is it shows us where we stand in our present so we can be rooted in our present and it will give us trajectory for our future. We're hoping that we can make food and be able to tell stories of food that do that, that, that ignites that inside of our Hmong diners. Our non Hmong diners, I want them to be able to see again, our past to see where we come from to know where we stand with them in the present and how to go into the future with them. Mm. Mm. That's honestly what I've learned from my mom and dad. Mm. You know, dad always said, don't ever forget who you are. No matter where you travel in the world, no matter where you are, you're going to have to still look in the mirror every morning mm. and you can see who you are. But he never said, just stop there and be, feel bad about all, all the tragedy. No, 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 no. He always taught us how to work in the moment, whatever the times, whatever happens, you're, you're hustling, you're hustling and you're doing this because there's there's a thought of or there's this idea of the future or what's up next. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's to me, that's what I'm really excited about. Hopefully that we can, you know, do that in that corner yeah. on, you know, uh, on 18th and 2nd there. Yeah. yeah. I think the whole city's waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. I think we, we've been, again, like I said, we've been very, very blessed, you know, to, to be able to do what we get to do now so that we can, you know, keep doing uh, the stuff that we get uh, that's coming up and our, our team's excited. You know, I think that in the midst of just building projects and frustrations and stuff like that, you lose some of that excitement or some of that nuance because you're just so in the muck of stuff every day. And I think for our team, we have to remind ourselves that where we're like, Hey guys, we get to do some pretty cool stuff. Like that's the thing that we get to say to each other. They're like, yeah, we do, you know, yeah. cause in the mix of details and stuff like that, you're like, Oh, you know, yeah. but then it's like, no, but we get, to where do, do you put room. the 220 volt? Yeah. 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 We're, we're like, uh, where do we put the 220 or, you know, or do we build it here or do we cut yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. man. So I think that if V9 was built four years ago, I don't think that, I would be able to have a clear vision of it like mm. I do today. I even think that the whole episode with the leg, you know, being in the, the hospital, doing, going through all that stuff, it gave me a great time to, it actually, honestly, like gave me a great time to relax or, or to, no, I shouldn't say relax, reflect. Mm-hmm. It like stopped me in my tracks and be like, dude, we gotta take care of this. Yeah. It's made me more aware of health, you know, just, just my own health and stuff like that. It's made me more, more aware of like, okay, like, you know, why is it important to always, you know, um, ask for help? Like, I think that's the thing. And that's still a lesson I'm still learning today. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I don't know how many times I've been able to feel relaxed at my home <laughs> mm. <laughs> because of the way you guys all set it up in the way that it, it's there where I know that at the end of the day, I can, I can go there, just relax. And maybe sometimes it's 30 minutes before going to bed or maybe sometimes yeah. just lounging, watching sports yeah. center, you know, or it, it even like cooking at home now has become a little bit more fun now instead of like, oh, I just got to make something to eat, you know, and just thinking, thinking through some stuff, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. But part of the the nature of who we are as humans is that we take up space. Mm -hmm. Literally, I'm taking up some space, which means I need some space around me. Mm -hmm. That is what you are doing Mm -hmm. in creating such a thoughtful space. I mean, I am so excited for people Mm -hmm. to walk into Vinay and to feel it. To, yeah. to see, I'm not going to give anything away, yeah, yeah. but to see what you've chosen and what your architects there, and designers yes. have chosen. There are, yeah. You are creating 
a space for people mm -hmm. to be welcome yeah. to be restored. I'm always I'm a dude who always thinks about like I want everything to have meaning. Yeah. And there's all these like different I and mean, we talked about it. There's all these different pieces, all these different elements that we're using not for the sake of trying to be trendy, but like, hey, there's meaning in this. There's every depth. piece has. Yeah. Meaning. Yeah. So every yeah. piece has meaning. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Well, man, thanks for hanging out with me, bro. It's been great. <laughs> always good. And I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you are. I mean, put put a number on it. Are you back to 100? Are you at 97? Uh, I, I don't know. No, I, I guess still got to go through PT and stuff like that. But every mm. morning when I wake up, I'm like, okay, how, how do we, you know, like it's good. even like going up and downstairs, where it's like, okay, suck yeah. it up. Let's do it. You know? I mean, your legs bending. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, great. that's, that's good. But you know, the, 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 the progress is a, going a lot faster and further than what doctors have expected when, you know, I've gone in for my post op checks yeah. up, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. It's good. So yeah, I mean, but it's a cool scar. You know, I, I've told I've told people that like you know before I went under, I was just telling the surgeon, I'm like, hey, can you like do the stitches up in like lightning bolt so I have a cool lightning bolt coming down my leg? <laughs> he had a good laugh, and then I think he put like you know, he put like the sleeping gas on me, and I was out, and I don't remember what happened next. Then, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a funny scar. My, my little niece and nephew are hilarious about it. They're like, oh, I'm, one of them's like, I'm gonna throw up, you oh, know. Yeah. And I'm like, it's okay, buddy, you know. So yeah. Well, cool, man. Thanks a lot for coming by. Yeah, um, thanks for yeah. having me. Always, yeah, always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks, brother.